بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد all praise to Allah peace be upon رسول الله and his family and companions and all of us عباد الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I welcome all of you to the Ramadan sharing series earlier for last three weeks we talked about the prayer we talked about the importance we talked about the maqasid the purpose of the prayer and last week we talked about the inner dimension the asrar of the prayer this week I, I I came across something quite important and also fascinating so I wanted to talk to you about the benefits of the prayer and I want to cover two topics one is the individual benefit the other is a social benefit so the individual benefit that I'm going to talk about is actually the health significance of the uh, prayer postures before I start talking about it we need to understand one thing that despite of this health significance we only pray for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us he, like we talked earlier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for us but Allah created us for him so so despite of the benefits of the prayer whatever that we pray the rewards we can only uh, expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but I came across with this research paper which talk about the prayer postures I really wanted to share with you it's quite fascinating that this research they went to all level to talk about the all kind of postures and portraits that actually gives you some sort of health benefits so the this this research comes from the University of Malaya Medical Center UMMC cardiology consultant and specialist and they talk about they say that 12 rakah of the prayer for example if you pray like for example uh, 6 rakah 4 plus 2 it becomes 12 uh, I mean 6 I mean you, you, you pray like 4 plus 4 uh, plus 2 plus 2 then it becomes uh, 12 rakah this is a unit for a set of actions in a prayer we, this one can be equivalent to 30 minutes of light exercise daily this light exercise is always been recommended by the health expertise in fact when you are going for prayer and you are walking towards the masjid the local masjid again all these 30 minutes a day if you can do like five times prayer and you are doing it like 30 to 50 minutes per day and you are doing it for seven day in a week time this is good enough to be called as a daily routine exercise then they talk about the various postures of salah were studied they are talking to talk about one by one starting from takbir because we have takbir and qiyam and then we have ruku' and then we have sujood and then we have tashahud and then we have salam when it comes to takbir and qiyam they say this will ease the balance of the body and lower back uh, lower back brought on to a neutral position whilst activating the core muscles at the same time so this position will help you uh, to strengthen because when you are saying Allahu Akbar uh, you, are, you are lifting your hand and then you are widening your chest it actually gives you it improves to strength, straighten the back and improves the posture this is from Qiyam and Takbir then we move to Ruku'a when we do the ruku which is we call the forward bending this ruku will strengthen your back again also it will extend the spine and increases the flexibility of hips and hamstrings at the same time it's going to relieve the stiffness in the spine you know sometimes even you have the stiffness in the neck sometimes at the back all this going to help to improve the posture as well as 
you know there is a balance and coordination between your body that is the beauty of when you are doing ruku and you stay for at least three times subhanallah wa bihamdihi and when you are doing it subhanallah rabbil azim when you are doing this you know that particular time it gives you a coordination this posture also very much useful to treat any kind of backache and vertebral column related disease i think sometimes we need to look for the dictionary for what kind of terminologies that these medical experts are using you know it will reduce the risk risk of nerve compression and also when you get up from the ruku it will promote the flexibility of the spine for all sort of healthy people so this is something uh, you know uh, amazing uh, part when we do ruku and we get up from the ruku there is an engineer according to uh, professor muhammad uh, uh, khasawni i hope i i, I pronounce right um, he actually according to his study he says that the complex physical movements of the ritual can reduce lower back pain if performed regularly and properly we need to understand when we do ruku most of us sometimes we make it fast we don't do it properly there should be the balance when you do ruku you you cannot do like this it has to be you know you need to make sure that you are actually doing it properly like 90 degree yeah so it has to be in that way and uh, this is this 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 work has been published you know the findings has been published in the international journal of industrial and systems engineering also a study also there is another study from university of malaya biomedical engineering conducted on patients with regular back pain and even pregnant mothers uh, especially from all races of the people in the country like malay indian and chinese communities showed that the ruku and also sujood positions could be used as therapy it could be used as a therapy and in help to relax the spinal canal and reduce the risk of pressure on the spinal nerve so this is all the benefits of ruku and uh, let's go to sujood sujood is more interesting the fascinating data are there you know when we are doing sujood the posture you know combined with other exercise it will open the lower lumbar facet joints may help to reduce the lower back pain and also can be used to treat spinal stenosis and degenerative disc diseases you know when 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 someone is in the uh, prostration position you know because the head the head is going to be on the floor so the head is in a position lower than the heart the heart is going to be up and then uh, and then the head the brain is going to be down usually in usual circumstances you will be standing the head is up and then your heart is lower but in sujood your heart is going to be up and then your head is going to be down therefore the the the, the head receives increased blood supply to the brain it it will stimulate the brain's frontal cortex this will reduce the chances of you know brain uh, brain headaches even tumor it will helps to reduce high blood pressure those are having having problem with the pressure and cholesterol you know this is a very good exercise that they are doing when they are praying they don't know but they are doing it every single day the surge in blood supply also has a positive effect on memory you know because it goes to your brain it has a positive effect on memory all concentration you know even you want to become the conscious it will help you in a way like psyche and also other cognitive abilities now let's move to jalsa which is actually tashahhud the sitting when we are sitting you know the fuller the full inner range of motion on knee joint is achieved and it prevents restricted joint range which is most commonly seen in patients with degenerative knee problems so these are the research i really like to read for you this is something you know when when you are sitting with lower back uh, lower back in good posture 
it will help you to strengthen your core muscles because you are sitting tight and then you are actually tightening your muscles and then releasing your muscles it is good for the blood vessels you know also sitting in kneeling position not only helps to maintain the good posture but also improves flexibility and then it it also strengthen the ligament you know when you are rising up after you know let's say you you are in the first rak'ah and you are going for the second rak'ah after sitting and then you are rising up after the jalsa to continue for the other rak'ah it involves activities like you know what we call it deep squats you know we do this like exercise when we go for some activities this is another kind of deep squats as well as full of half kneeling postures and finally when we do salam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah when we do this is an excellent form of neck and upper uh, uh, vertebral exercises exercises the head performs rotational movements like this right over the uh, cervical uh, vertebra uh, it, it also helps to mobilize the upper back you know the upper back and also uh thoracic muscles so these are the terms that they used i hope you understand so you know uh, that the entire prayer if you look all these uh, postures if this can give you this kind of health benefits why we actually ignore to pray that the, the most important thing that we need to know like i told earlier we are not praying for the purpose of health benefits if anyone comes with that intention the prayer will be spoiled inna al a'mal bin niyat whatever the niya that you bring the intention that you come only those intentions will help you like for, for like prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man 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 kana hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi fa hijratuhu ila allah wa rasulihi wa man kana hijratuhu ila dunya yusibuha aw imra'ati yankuha fa hijratuhu ila ma hajara ilayhi if someone wants to do the traveling hijra for the purpose of getting married or for the purpose of the world prophet said he will get his purpose so now my purpose should not be you know my health benefit but what i'm trying to tell here this is the benefit advantage of you know when we are praying these things also keep on happening so that when someone pray he can continuously can be praying again and again because it is it becomes healthy it gives you a sort of benefits right at the same time at the same times you know it gives you uh, it gives you an instruction that when you are praying make sure that you slowly nicely properly you do the praying you do not you do not you do not do like you know you are in 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 emergency you want to go away you you really want to you know uh, no you, you you don't do that you you make sure that you have proper time and you do your prayer uh, properly and nicely and slowly the next point that i wanted to talk about which is actually the social cultural impact you know this congregational prayer jamaa given for that purpose that's the reason why it's 27 times uh, better than the individual prayer because this congregational uh, salah shows the glorious unity and the brotherhood among muslims nations and uh, you know when when someone is praying uh, the most important thing that you know people are becoming close there is a closeness of hearts and also believers the muslims getting acquainted with each other when someone praying you know he might get um, uh, 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 get acquainted each other through these gatherings and uh, and it will brings you know it might have great consequences for example you know because of the jamaa prayer someone will help will start helping each other out and uh, someone will tending to each other's problem and then it will also help to building positive friendships creating strong family ties even it goes to rational marriage and also these might uh, be the some outcomes of these acquaintances was because of the congregational prayer you know people are becoming healthier and wealthier and uh, you know prosperous and uh, this is the reason why uh, you know when we are praying we are saying sawu istawu sawu sufufakum rahimakumullah we says that you make sure that you 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 all of you make your saf 
properly so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may, 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 may grant mercy upon you. So this is the mercy that we are talking about when someone is praying in congregational prayer together there is always a help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who cannot find any friend you know this is what Hazrat Ali said once you know a person who cannot find any friend is deprived but the one who keeps losing his friends losing his old friends he is most deprived that's why if someone is praying jama'ah we have to go again and pray jama'ah so that we don't lose our old friends and then this is also another uh, chance that we are getting the spirit of social equality you know the social equality like what a, a scholar like Muhammad Iqbal says the choosing of a single direction towards which people offer salah in Islam was done in order to unify all Muslims in the world you know we are all praying towards the single direction that single direction is actually gives us uh, you know uh, unity and uh, the, the spirit of social equality in society and this is what we call uh, the um, this salah the essence of salah is actually will destroy any obstacles because there is no dividing people there is no dividing you know uh, uh, belief system when we are praying together we are together when when we are giving chance for everybody to come and pray it's like you know we are treating them equally we are giving them chances equally and then people you know get together and they understand equally and then they can perform you know whether it is the material world or whether it is the spiritual world they will perform well so with all these notes you know we need to understand that you know this congregational prayer has a, has many functions and applications whether it is a political or cultural or social you know all these things comes together when when someone performing congregational prayer so we need to get this as a culture embedding salah culture and we also meet, need to make sure that you know through the media we need to show that we are together in this so that you know this this prayer can you know consist of religious values and might impact a social cultural and social sectors you know this can actually can be done only through establishing congregational prayer because this will promote kindness empathy in society and also it will bring the the society into political economic and cultural improvements all those objectives can be can be completed through congregational prayers but again at this juncture because of the pandemic COVID-19 we have issues in going through this you know congregational prayers we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stop this to protect us to end this pandemic so that we can all go back to masjid and pray and bring the social uh, community development so hopefully uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds in Ramadan may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our qiyam in the in the night and, and our shiyam in the day and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us better in this best month of Ramadan wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen